How's everybody doing? So um, I'm almost ready to paint this building now. And I just want to uh, mention a couple of things pre-paint, I guess. Um, you know, it's funny how you can take a, a simple, you know, seemingly boring subject. Like here's a photo. Okay. <laughs> this part here in question right here is I took, like this building has been compressed way down. Like it only comes up to well, the left side of the building, like this side, is actually, uh, I think, right here. Yeah. But I moved things down. Like, I stole this and, and shifted it down, which will be on this part of the model, you know, to add visual interest, right? That's why we compress, as I mentioned. We compress from the one-to-one -one square foot real world into the miniature square. Uh, square inch world to make the scene interesting. So I'm just building, finishing up this pole here with the cabling, like the wiring, like I, like, I think with poles, like, you know, there's this idea that, okay, you put the telephone poles up and then you just stretch thread across, like, that's cool. But a couple of problems with that. Um, if you do it too early, you'll rip it all down when you're working on your layout. So you got to almost wait to the very end, right? And two is um, they never run taut, never. Cables never run taut. Like, here, I'll just show you the photo one more time. Like, look at the, yeah, okay, this is looking long ways, but look at the droop. So I just want to talk to you about power lines here quick. Um, so people have mentioned in the past, and I get that, like I, it's, a, it's a great idea. There's no doubt about that. Except for me, like if I can't uh, model them correctly, like at least to a believable sense of what power lines really look like, then I'm not going to bother, right? Like you know how you can run thread, but the problem is, is if it's taut, like lines don't look like that. Okay, so it really doesn't matter what direction you look at them. There's always a sag, especially these bottom heavier ones, which are comms, I think. I'm not an electrician or a power pull tech, but if somebody is, feel free to comment below about that to enlighten the community. But I've noticed that these, these bottom ones are, are, are heavier. Of course, they have the cable that runs, the support cable, and then they strap the lines to the cable somehow and sometimes you'll have these little capacitor deals and whatever for filters maybe they are for communications i'm not really sure now i haven't bothered with the top ones and i'm not going to probably until the very end of the layout i'll manage that like as a final you know one percent you know detail finish at the end but right now i'm doing it this way because i think it looks cool and uh, like this one's yet to be painted, but uh, this is what I can do because I'm going to have to get back here to do the next phase of the modeling. So I just pop this off like this. It comes off quite easily. And the evergreen plastic is quite robust. Then with this pole here, like watch this power box junk. And so this is pinned in with brass, right? It comes out. This is just tucked into a drilled out pipe, like a uh, ABS pipe or whatever. And then this line just pops off the same way this one. The poles come out. I like all this gets moved, right? Including the building. And now I can access the back scene without breaking everything. Especially if it was poles. If it was poles and then I put the lines on early, as mentioned. Um, I'd just be kicking myself, you know, <laughs> right? Why? Because I can't live without them for the time being. Uh, I don't think so. But I think it's good to plan them in. And I think if you can uh, introduce SAG, okay, as I uh, pointed out, um, then I think they look far more realistic, right? So I'll show you how easy this really is to put on. Uh, I have yet to paint this. 
Uh, but I'll just paint it on a piece of wax paper because this one's done. But I'm going to do them all like this, I think. Okay. Doesn't that look better? You know, the sag, you know, they look far more realistic that way. So what I'm finishing up on this pole here is, is I run these cables down. I just made up this little sort of relay box panel, you know, just so that I could pull this off, you know, without having to hold the flexibility of, of all the rod and springing off everywhere. So I'm just going to cover that up with just a, just a little sheet just to clean that up a bit. And then, so I made these terminal pieces. They're further down on the building. Okay, and they actually, you know, just with brass pins slide into the building because I'm going to paint them separately and I want them to come off because I'm going to attach them to the pole and make them one sort of model. So I put the building in place and I can just sort of plug these in like little mini components. Now you could do it uh, where you could just mount those on like, like hard mount and then just maybe turn that into a rod on the end and then just plug it into a hole. You can do that too. There's probably 101 ways to do this. But I think what I'm going to do is, is um, because I want to keep the detail of the, of the cable going into this terminal, I'm just going to make this as a separate unit and then I can paint it and then just plug it in. So when I need to remove it out of the way to get into the scene that's behind this, I can lift this building out in two seconds and pull the pole off a rod, right? And uh, I can access the back side of the scene without damaging the foreground models, okay? So I just want to uh, commentate just a little bit here at this stage because this process really kind of goes fast. And to be honest with you, I don't think a lot of people really enjoy uh, filming this process because it's just so much going on. Like you, like you need to really get into a flow and so you're reaching up and sorry, like I'm not uh, lamenting about doing the content or anything, but it's just I'm very disruptive. Like it almost... Um, makes the work not come out the way I want it to uh, when I have to film every move I make. So I'm just going to shoot paint and then talk a bit and then shoot paint, talk, you know, that kind of thing, uh, if that's okay, because I just can't keep uh, interrupting myself. I get too distracted and I lose the whole creative flow. So this is just buff, like, well, I don't even know what it is anymore, but I showed you on the bottom. It's just a buff. And all I'm interested in here is, is I don't care, like I'm not cutting in any color. I, I just want to shoot paint onto the plastic. I want to get a light uh, beige paint onto these poles so that uh, I can start uh, putting washes of Vallejo on later with lots of water and just hand painting. You can sort of see, um, I turn the lights down because it changes every time. Um, you know, that's crazy, but you can see the shadow light. Anyway, um, sometimes that helps to establish, like see how the tops of these change, see bright light and then shadow, right? So I'm going to end up doing that with Vallejo washes, you see, to create that look. Otherwise, everything is just washed out, like, you know what I mean? So, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to cut in black for, by hand, the cables. And these are a lot of fun to paint, to touch by hand. Like just throw some colors on with the airbrush so it's all soft, like whatever colors you do. As long as they're pale colors, really, really pale grays, beiges or white, well, gray or beige. And then when you start putting darker washes on, like you don't have to worry about it because the washes, the thin washes will do, or the taco sauce, if you prefer that term, will do all the work for you. And then you can come in at the very end and just light grays and just touch the cans and, you know, things like that, right? Okay.
Okay, so you can see the uh, side here with the block now, and there's quite a bit of residue on the top side of the block. So I want to paint this finished color a very light beige color or a very super light cream with some uh, patches uh, on the other side of the building, etc. So in order to clean these off, just so I can have the engraving um, wash highlighted, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, in this case, this is just 99%, and a little rag. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe the Tamiya off, and it'll just grab the top side, right? The trick here is just to keep turning the, the rag. And I want to try to remove most of it, uh, not all of it, because there'll be some showing through, which will give it a nice varied tonal quality. But um, you can see how that cleans that up. Okay, so I got the light color loaded up. Actually, it's probably a bit heavier than I like. Uh, I'd say it's about 80% IPA, 20% pigment per volume, and I find it's probably too much pigment, but uh, we'll just see how it goes and, uh, you know, just get in close and see if I can just etch in some areas. Um, so the idea is, is that you will lose some of the... Um, dark lines, but... Not entirely, and that's the way the building looks anyway, right? So by going thin, uh, you get to add color to the block, and the raw umber wash uh, will still show through. Okay, so I just want to show you how I'm going to do the roof here. And this is one of a couple of ways I like to do, like warehouse kind of industrial roofs. The first one is I usually just dump matte medium, just spread it around with a brush and sprinkle dirt or sand on it and then paint it with washes. It looks awesome. Or if I want more of this kind of tar papery look, um, I'm going to use like tissue paper. Now you can use toilet paper, but it's probably best to use a, like a stiffer paper like this I got from the craft store it's a type of I wouldn't say it's silk span but you can use silk span like from you know for or tissue for covering model like dope airplanes is really good because there's enough pliability to it that it wrinkles up but it's also got a good enough weave to it that it won't just blow apart right now you want to have some texture because roofs with tar paper will expand and contract right and that's the effect that you want which will ultimately give you this this kind of a look. That's the plastic with the silk span or this tissue over top. And then you can see I put a white wash on there and then progressively grays and blues or whatever color that you want. But you can see how it, see the texture there? And it looks really cool. And then you can just cut, drill holes for your vents and HVACs and stuff like that. So what I do is I uh, just, you know, I have a jar of water 
I use, I always have water because I almost always use water-based uh, acrylics or products. And matte medium is water-based and it'll mix with any water-based acrylic. Uh, it's friendly to it. So I just take a wet brush and then I take a strip like this. I've already laid a piece on, but you probably, I don't know if you can see it really, but, and then I just tamp it down and you, like try to use an old ratty brush I find works good because it, it like the frayed ends tends to splay out the you know the tar paper kind of look okay and um, don't be afraid to use a wet brush right because it's all going to dry anyway now when you put it on like this I don't know if you can see it or not um, I wonder what happened if I turn this light off you can see the texture a bit yeah yeah you can right um, and so I just stab it in like that and then you can actually just sort of tear it off, okay? And then tuck it into the corners like that. And then what I do is, is I just drop a couple drops of, of uh, straight matte medium. And it'll just mix in with the wet tissue. And this will uh, be the glue now which takes thin paint beautifully. Like you're going to have a lot of fun when you paint a roof like this because you just do wet on wet, like lots of water and like Vallejo grays and earths. And I mean, you can pretty much use any color you want. Uh, do I have a photo here? I think I have a photo. Oh yeah, look at this here. So here's, let me put the light back on. So look at this here. Like see all this? The, when this is drying, you just put water on this and you just drip in, like drop different grays and whites, like three or four, even half a dozen colors that like with lots of water, like that, let, let it splay out. Like I'll show that. And that's what you get. And you don't have to be like a great artist or anything to do this. Trust me, man. It's just fun stuff. That's all it is and messing around. Okay. Okay, so you can s s notice that I use a lot of these lids from yogurt cups. Like some of them are different. Like this is a Parmesan cheese one. And the reason why I like this is because, well, for one, it's white and they're kind of a Delrin plastic. So even if the acrylic paint dries, like you can still, you know, pop it off, right? Like it like, like doesn't stick that easily. They do after a while, but, and then I like this trough here. Like see the trough? Because when I put water, into this I can fill this trough full of water and then I can basically pull it up onto the palette like without flooding all my colors unnecessarily so that's why I really like these here so um, with this one I'm just going to wet this down so this is um, Vallejo paint now there's a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol on this. I don't normally mix isopropyl alcohol with Vallejo because it's it doesn't like it. So this is 71.042 dark brown. And then I really like this color a lot too. 71.053 dark sea gray. Now mind you, you can mix all these yourself, right? But when I work on small models, I don't, I'm not going to take the trouble of mixing up colors because I waste a lot of paint that way. And with more bottles of paint that I have to label. And I'll have to shoot from the hip uh, when I do this kind of thing. So with brushes, I like a fan brush now and again. This is a really cheap brush. And you know, sometimes cheap brushes are your best friend. Eh? Like, I don't know which brush this was. I think I mentioned this. This has been around since the beginning of, uh, uh, this is a carryover from Glover Road. And for the life of me, I do not know w who made this brush. And look at the ferrule. It never came loose. And this has sat in buckets of water, pails of water for days. And usually the ferrules pop, but this one didn't. But if they do, pull them off. Like if they get loose, pull them off, Put coat the, uh, the inner core of the wooden handle with CA, medium CA, and then push it back on. It should be good to go for a while. So here's a small, cheap little brush. Um, 
that uh, I usually like to start with. See? See how that works? See how it's wet and then the, the actual like little creases and things that have been created through the matte medium tissue process, try to use those in your favor. And if it's going on too opaque, then you're using too much paint, okay? Wow, that's cool. Okay, let me just zoom in just to show you that. Okay. See? That's just water in those colors. I mean, it would probably be a good idea to just leave this now. Like that didn't, like, how long did that take? And look at it. The roofs are... are Roofs are really easy to do if you let the mediums work for you, like the, the texture, right? And then thin paint. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, so let's zoom out again. Remember, less is better, okay? But not less water. Always make sure uh, the trick to this technique is to keep the surface wet, but not so that it's like... a a big flooded pond. Nice and wet, just a little bit more than damp, but enough where there's a little bit of moisture on the uh, surface. So I'm going to take some of this here, and I'm just going to leave this darker part here, and I'm going to come at it from over here like this, down this seam. Just chase, you know, chase some of your seams uh, that are from the tissue paper. Use them as a guide to trace over with paint. That's all I do. And it'll create happy little weathering blemishes for you on its own. The water will carry it. See that? Dip back and forth with your brown. Try not to make it all one muddy color. Isn't that neat? Okay, so I'm going to cut the frames for these windows. It's 10 thou clear polystyrene sheet from Evergreen. It's number 9006 clear. It's this stuff here. Okay. And I pre-cut these sizes out. Okay. They're put to the side. This is just Tamiya tape. And I'm going to just cut thin half mil, one mil lines with a ruler. I'm not going to measure them. I'm just going to eyeball, just overkill. I'll just cut 30 or 40 lines like that. And then I'll just pick the best ones that I want and the sizes that I need as I go along. And I'm going to paint this. You can airbrush this or brush it by hand with acrylic paint. And then you just peel off these strips and lay them right onto the clear. Just stick them on and they're good to go and just pop them in, right? That's it. <laughs> 